the communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Nine years isn't a long time to the average American living a normal life. But a communist for the FBI doesn't live a normal life. And nine years of fear and tension seems an eternity. The fear isn't all personal. The greatest fear is that those you're trying to protect will fail to recognize their danger. Refuse to realize that communists are dedicated to the elimination of personal liberty wherever it exists. If you are one of those who has refused to believe, listen to my story with an open mind. It should open your eyes because it's part of the story of communism. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Against the Middle. It's Tuesday evening, and I'm walking my tightrope again, crossing the chasm between communism and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I've just come from a cell meeting where I've received instructions in the gentle art of starting a riot. And I'm getting cleaned up before going out to meet my FBI contact. But I'm interrupted by a knock at the door. I'll be with you in a second. Oh, come in. You seem surprised to see me, Comrade Svetik. I am, Comrade Horton. I I was about to go out. Then we got here just in time. Yeah. This is Comrade Carlescu, Comrade Svetik. How do you do? It is my pleasure, Comrade. Comrade Carlescu has just arrived from Europe. He's on a special assignment in which you will cooperate, Comrade Svetik. What is the assignment? To begin with, Comrade Svetik, since you are to accompany me to Chicago, leaving immediately would be well for you to pack while I outline our mission. I don't see how I can leave immediately, Comrade. What? Well, I, uh, I have some unfinished party business I need to look after. Well, it will have to wait, Comrade Svetik. Oh, now, look. I not... should have told you, Comrade Svetik. Comrade Colescu is high in the ranks of the European MVD. Now, according to the directive I received from New York, his orders are to be followed without question. No, I, I didn't understand. Thank you, Comrade Horton. You can go now. Thanks. Now, Comrade Svetik, if you will proceed with your packing, I will proceed with my outline of our mission. All right. Uh, what about our mission, Comrade Colescu? Well, unbelievable as it may seem, Comrade Svetik, dangerous reactionaries are still operating in one of the newest People's Republics. A group in this country is supplying the funds being used against us in that People's Republic. There isn't much we can do about that, is there? Not against those in this country. However, once we know the names of those in Europe, we can end the movement overnight. And you're here to get the names of these European anti-communists from their friends in this country? That is our mission, Comrade Svetik. Just how are we supposed to do this? Through operators we have managed to plant in the European organization, they have learned that the group leader in this country is a Dr. Zorni, who lives in Chicago. Now, I have a letter of introduction to the doctor from Vladimir Brodnik, one of their most trusted European workers, who happens to be one of our operatives. Mm, I see. Now, we will have the fullest cooperation of the local party members, comrade, the best protection they can give us. But I am warning you, this is a dangerous operation. If we are clumsy and get caught, Dr. Zoni and his group will unquestionably eliminate us, as we intend eliminating their stooges in Europe. That sounds reasonable. But why mention it? Because I do not want to depend on a comrade who may weaken under stress. 
If you are afraid, say so. I will get someone else. I'll go. I thought you would. We better go to the airport. I don't want any part of this assignment, but I have to take it. Because if I don't, someone else will. And the lives of some of our anti-communist friends behind the Iron Curtain are at stake. On the way to the airport, I try to get away from Carlescu long enough to phone the FBI. But there's no chance. There's no chance when we get off our plane in Chicago either. Because local party members are waiting for us. To drive us to an apartment house where they give us a briefing. Unfortunately, comrades, we cannot give you too much information about Dr. Zorni's group or its activities. He operates a bookstore specializing in technical works, and his whole establishment is exceptionally well-guarded. Guarded how? In the daytime, Comrade Carlescu, the store is filled with customers browsing among the books. The same customers each day. And at night, the place is protected by burglar alarms with direct connections to the precinct police station. This has to be an infiltration job, all right. And even that is far from certain of favorable results, Comrade Zvedek. One of our own cell members joined Dr. Zorni's group a month ago and failed to get any information. He didn't learn anything? We don't know. We only know that he was taken into the group four weeks ago. I haven't seen him since. Mm. Dr. Zorni blandly denies ever having heard of him. Well, that's about all we can tell you. Then take us to the bookstore. Comrade Svetik and I have a job to do. As we drive from the apartment to Dr. Zorni's neighborhood... I can't keep my mind off the party member who joined Zorni's group and disappeared without a trace. And I can feel my blood pressure pounding in my temples as our car comes to a stop. Well, comrades, this is as close to Zorni's bookstore as we can take you, without endangering your mission and your lives. We've both been to the store inquiring about our missing comrade. If they saw you with us, they... Oh, where is the bookstore from here? The next street over, Comrade Carlescu. Turn to your right. It's in the middle of the block. You can't miss it. Come on, Comrade Svetik. We will find out how my letter of introduction works. This is the place, all right, Comrade. Do not call me Comrade. I am playing Joe Carlescu. And I will call you Matt. Okay, Joe. Come on. Now go right to the back of the store, Matt. It should attract attention. Okay. I hope it's the sort of attention we want. Well, what? Look as though you wanted some help. That won't be necessary. By the time you turn around, it'll be here. May I help you, gentlemen? We'd like to speak to Dr. Zorni. I am Dr. Zorni, sir. I'm afraid we need a little more identification than that. Oh? Mr. Barton? Yes, doctor? Uh, please come here. Yeah, what is it, Dr. Zoni? These gentlemen would like to have me identified. I'm satisfied, Dr. Zoni. Are you Joe? Uh, I guess so. Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Joe Carlescu. I have just arrived from Europe with a message from Vladimir Brodnik. I do not want to talk here. It is perfectly safe. Every man in the store is a trusted friend. Oh, well, in that case... However, it is not very comfortable. I have living quarters in the back. We will go there. This way, please, gentlemen. Now, if you please, Mr. Kaleska, the message from Brodnik. Oh, here. Brodnik speaks highly of your work in the underground, Mr. Kaleska. What can I do for you? No, as I see it, Doctor, the question is, what can I do for you? What do you mean, sir? I, together with my friend, Mr. Svetik, want to join your group of patriots here in the United States and continue the work I was doing before I was driven out of Europe. I see. Brodnik's letter does not mention Mr. Svetik. No, Brodnik did not know him. He is my cousin. We'd never seen each other until Joe arrived a short time ago. When he told me what was actually happening in Europe, I gave up my job to come to Chicago with him. You sound like the sort of man we need badly. When do we start, and what do we do? <laughs> I admire your spirit, Mr. Svetik, but I am afraid it is not that simple. I will have to take up this matter with the council. How long will that take? Not long. 
Several of those you saw browsing in the store are members of the council. Is it safe to have so many members of the group in a place where local communists can identify them, Dr. Zoni? Quite safe, Mr. Kalescu. Every one of those men has lost all of his relatives who are living behind the Iron Curtain. For their men be the purpose, and immune to coercion. Uh -huh. As for their personal safety, like myself, they all have permits which allow them to carry guns. I see. Now, please, make yourselves at home while I pull the council on your request. After Dr. Zorni left, the minutes dragged by interminably. And although Carlescu and I were unable to discover their observation post, we knew we were being watched every second for any suspicious move. Finally, when even Carlescu began to fidget as his nerves responded to the silent pressure, Dr. Zorni returned to the room, accompanied by the man he had introduced as Mr. Barton. Gentlemen, your request has been presented to the council. And did they accept us? The answer to that, Mr. Kaleski, is yes and no. What does that mean, Dr. Zoni? Exactly what it sounds like, Mr. Svetik. You are being accepted as probationers in the movement. Well, that's a step in the right direction. When do we report? You have already reported, Mr. Svetik. Huh? For a time, until the council has clearly established your identities and your purpose in coming here, you must live here with me and expect suspicion. Oh, well, look, we came here as volunteers. If this is Matt, the way you... Dr. Zorni is right. What? Matt does not understand the precautions necessary in underground movements, Doctor. In America, only communists have need for such knowledge, Mr. Kalescu. Mr. Svetik's ignorance is a fine reference. Well, can't we leave the house at any time? For, for any reason, Doctor? Of course you can, Mr. Svetik. But when you do, Mr. Barton must go with you. The lives of our friends in Europe depend upon our vigilance. I see. Any other restrictions? Only one. Communists have already tried to infiltrate our organization. Until the Council is absolutely certain of your motives, gentlemen, I must ask you to surrender the revolvers that so obviously bulge your coats. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. Well, uh... I would rather not, Dr. Zorni. I am afraid I must insist, Mr. Kalescu. If you will direct your attention to Mr. Barton, you can see that he has you covered, and the council members are just outside the door. Starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Mr. Barton has you covered and the council members are just outside the door. That's all Dr. Zorni says. And he says that quietly without any melodramatics. But Comrade Kolescu and I know that we've had the word... And we give up our guns without any argument. Then wait to see what happens. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing. For two nerve-wracking days, I sit idly by while Carlescu is questioned about things that have happened behind the Iron Curtain. Apparently, he passes the test. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Dr. Zorni. What's good about it, Doctor? I'm getting a little tired sitting in a back room looking at the walls. <laughs> Still impatient, huh, Mr. Svetik? Well, I didn't give up my job to follow Joe out here just to sit around twiddling my thumbs. Oh, of course you didn't. Uh, by the way, what was this job you gave up, Mr. Stetty? Why, uh, with an insurance company. I was a claim adjuster. Hmm. What company, Mr. Stetty? Valley Center Mutual. Why? Just routine. Now, although we have not yet had any direct word from Vladimir Brodnik, the council members are reasonably well satisfied with Mr. Kalescu's response to their questioning. That at least is gratifying, Dr. Zorni. Now, if you are still willing to accept group responsibilities and risks, we have a task for you. 
What's the job, Doctor? I have an important meeting this afternoon. A meeting at which no communist spies are desired. Hmm. Just how does this affect us, Doctor? Very directly, Mr. Svetik. Two communists known to the group members have been taking an undue interest in the bookstore for the past few days. Your job will be to keep them occupied, leading them away from the vicinity, if possible, while I get away to keep my appointment. Oh, I see. Normally, I would send Mr. Barton with you for protection, but I need Mr. Barton myself this afternoon. Well, give us back our guns, and we won't need any other protection. We don't want any gunplay, Mr. Svetik. We won't start any, Doctor. But if these Reds are as tough as you say they are, I don't want them to trail me away from this bookstore unless I have a gun. I can see your point. Your guns will be returned to you, but remember, if there is any shooting except in unquestionable defense of your lives, we will turn you over to the police. There will be no shooting, Dr. Zorni. I am sure that Mr. Svetik and I can handle any Communist Party members without violence. I feel quite certain that you can, Mr. Kalescu. By this evening, we will know the answer. That sounded like an expression of confidence from Dr. Zorni. And Carlescu and I congratulated ourselves on the way we'd fooled our enemies. Secretly signaling our comrades watching the bookstore to follow us, we led them to a place where we could talk. And we were unpleasantly surprised by their reaction. If Zorni was headed for an important meeting, you had no right to lead us away from the bookstore, comrades. Why, this comes very close to deliberate sabotage. We'll have to report it. Go ahead, comrades. And I will report you as a couple of thickheads who should be returned to the menial positions in which you obviously belong. Comrade Carlescu is in charge of this operation, comrades. His orders are to be followed without question. But Dr. Zorni... Zorni has been going to meetings for months without your learning anything. Our leading you away from the bookstore will gain us the confidence of the group. Are you making any progress, comrade? <laughs> At least thanks to Comrade Svetik's insistence, they have returned our revolvers. But not our ammunition. What? Check your gun. You're right, comrade. When Zorni said probation, he certainly meant it. What caliber revolver do you carry, comrade? Thirty-eight police special. Give us your cartridges. I only have those in the gun. You can get others. We can't. Give them to us. It's an order. Good. Now, were you able to learn anything at all while I was being questioned, Comrade Svetik? I overheard Zorni asking Barton about a list of names. Names of the group's members? I don't know. Zorni referred to it as a new list. Barton said he hadn't seen it. Uh, we are going back to the bookstore at once. We just got out of there. And we are going back while Dr. Zorni and Mr. Barton are out. With them gone, we should be able to check the living quarters thoroughly. This may be a trap, Comrade Carlescu. A trap? Zorni and his group may have sent you out while they prepared an unpleasant surprise for your return. It's a possibility, comrade. Yeah. Are there any suggestions? Yes. Why not send comrade Svetik back first to uh, spring the trap if there is one? That's a happy thought. It would spare you for future party assignments, comrade Karleski. Uh, that is true. You are not always thick-headed, comrade. I try to think of the party's best interests. Please remember that in your report, too, comrade. I shall. Uh, what do you think of the idea, comrade Svetik? I'm on an assignment. You tell me what to do, I'll do it. I am accepting the suggestion. You return to the bookstore immediately. I will follow you in half hour. If everything is all right, stand in the doorway under the pretext of looking for me, and I will join you. What happens if there is something wrong? I will praise you highly in my report, comrade Svetik. I don't like the idea of being a possible clay pigeon for Dr. Zorni's group, but I console myself with the thought that this does give me a chance to contact the FBI. Then I learn that this isn't much consolation after all. Sorry, Matt. We can't officially interfere in this matter. Why not? Political reasons. Koleski is traveling on a diplomatic passport. No matter what our sympathies may be, we can't take sides unless someone breaks the laws of the United States. But naturally, if anything happens to you... Oh, thanks. Carlescu has already promised to praise me in his report. How to have quite an obituary. I know what you're up against, Matt, but in this case I can't give you any help. Or even protection. Any advice? Well, none that will be of much help. Just try to stay out of trouble. If you can't, make as much noise as possible. 
I'll tip off the precinct police to keep a check on the bookstore. After hanging up, I return to the bookstore. Everything seems friendly enough, so I stand in the doorway as a signal to Carliscu, and he joins me. Then we walk directly to the living quarters and back. The council members are all smiles as we pass between them on our walk through the store, but as the door closes behind us, we hear the lock click. What was that? Only the lock on the door, Mr. Kalescu. Dr. Zorni. You seem surprised to see me, Mr. Kalescu. As a matter of fact, we are, Doctor. No one told us you'd returned. Did you have trouble? Uh, no violence, Doctor, but after all, communists are not fools. That is a matter of opinion, Mr. Kalescu. Was your meeting successful, Doctor? Very enlightening, Mr. Svetik. I will give you the details later. You did say you were a very close friend of Vladimir Brodnik, did you not, Mr. Kalesnik? Like brothers, Dr. Zornik. Have you heard from him again? Indirectly. And since the council is about to make its final decision concerning you two, I wanted to be sure of my facts. I am at your disposal, Doctor. I feel quite certain of that, Mr. Kalescu. Now, if you two will make yourselves comfortable, I will join the council. I am sorry you knew Brodnik so well, Mr. Kalesky. What could he have meant by that? I wish I knew. It didn't sound good. No. Did they take your gun away from you? No. Then give it to me. Our time may have run out. Well, if it has, I want a gun. There is no time for argument. Give me your gun. Now, I will guard the door while you go through Zorni's papers. Look for the list of names we want. The names of the European underground. So, while Comrade Kralescu stands guard at the door, I ransack Dr. Zorni's desk. But I find no names. The voluminous correspondence carries only code signatures. Hurry, Comrade, there must be a list of names somewhere. No man could remember everyone in the underground. Then, I make two startling discoveries. I find a notebook containing the underground's table of organization with all the names and corresponding code signatures. And I find a two-page letter which reads in part, The names attached are those of MVD spies who have been recently eliminated. Beware of anyone who contacts you giving any of these men as underground references. And at the top of the second page, I see the name of Vladimir Brodnik. The name Carlescu used as reference when we first met Dr. Zorni. Suddenly it occurs to me, by throwing away the letter and giving Corlescu the list, I can protect the lives of the European underground workers. Well, well, haven't you found any names yet, comrade? I just found a few. Good. Give them... No, put them in your pocket. I hear someone coming. Then get ready to make a break for it, comrade. Why? Did you get all the names? I got one list, and there's a letter that warns against... Here they come. Right through them. Hey, left you. We won't get out of here. Look out. Comrade Kalescu? I'm alive. And what happened to you, Comrade Sretik? Nothing much. I followed right behind you. You took most of the swings aimed at me. Uh, we were watching the bookstore, Comrade Kalescu. Yes. If we hadn't been there, you would have disappeared without a trace. Yes. Uh, uh, Comrade Sretik. Yes? The list of names you put in your pocket. Do you still have it? Yes. There are only a few. Well, it's a start. It will convince the hierarchy that Comrade Kalescu accomplishes his missions. Well, it won't do Comrade Brodnik much good. Why not? His name is at the top of the list. Let me see that list. Uh, it is at the top of the list. Wait till I get back to Europe with this. I always suspected Brodnik. This may not be the list we're looking for, Comrade Kalescu. It is the list I was looking for, Comrade Svetik. The list that will eliminate Comrade Brodnik and the rest of the traitorous swine. That was Carlescu, another typical red idealist, the type whose party zeal is always conditioned by suspicion of everyone. And the suspicion reacted against Carlescu, as I learned from party repercussions after he returned to Europe. His charges against Brodnik, who had died a party hero at the hands of the underground, was officially interpreted as an attempt to cover his own failure. And he disappeared. 
It's a lonely life being a communist, but when you can't depend on friends and can't afford enemies, you're forced to walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. Although we who live in the free world have not as yet been forced to an underground movement... It could happen here, and it will if we ever forget that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. To protect innocent persons, the names, dates, and places mentioned are fictitious. But the danger we warn against is very real. Many of these stories are based on the fantastic experiences of Matt Svetik. Next week, we'll bring you another strange adventure. Join us, won't you? 